Hello my brothers and sisters of the Order, welcome back to the Order, I'm Celtic Templar, and yes, for this video we are going to be talking about a weird invention in American Civil War history. That will be tanks in the Civil War. Now, in American history, they don't exactly teach this because of the fact that not that many times over you know, anybody in, uh, well, your history class is going to teach this, especially, well, your history teacher, because most of the time they don't exactly, well, have enough time, or the fact they don't want to teach this subject ever. In fact, I had to explain to y'all, the American Civil War was a major war in American history, but the thing is, we have to understand that the war itself was in general a major one, that in such has actually been forgotten with the technology and inventions that were used to fight in the war. Now, I had to put this out here, y'all. Uh, doing research on this subject was a lot of work, and I myself have more than a couple hundred books on the American Civil War. Yes, I love the American Civil War in that type of way and fashion, because I found it fascinating on how America technically tried to lie to its own people on the subject of the war itself. Now, uh, as I explained to y'all over and over on time on my channel that my granddaddy was an abolitionist who fought for the Republic of Texas during the American Civil War. Now, I myself had done a reenactment or two and such for my granddaddy that fought for the 4th Texas Infantry, and in such ways, uh, you gotta imagine, why would someone fight for slavery and in a such process, uh, well, why would they want to? Now, but that's a, another story for another time. But we have to understand, though, is that during the American Civil War, that there were many inventions that were created for in the American Civil War. And that was entirely to the fact that we had to understand. Now, upon researching these tanks, their only majorly ones we're going to be talking about is three to four, and that would actually be the, uh, I wanted to call it the buggy, which they called it the buggy back then. There would be the coach or the carriage, as it was also known as. And then there would also be the, uh, well, the wagon, and including also the tent. Now, the tent was technically never exactly manufactured or used, but it was the, the drawing. Now, we have to understand, though, during the American Civil War, the Confederacy had to design their own version of tanks in order to fight against the Union. However, these tanks weren't exactly what you would might call tanks. One major thing we have to understand is that there were no diesel engines, there were no engines pretty much on these things at all, unless you count the wagon or the tent. However, the other two, such as the, well, the, uh, carriage or as well the uh, buggy, they would have actually, well, used a uh, horse-drawn type mechanical type warfare. Meaning this was technically a horse and carriage type of, well, m military design. Now, I hear many of my viewers already asking, Templar, is that a little hard to believe? Well, yes, but the thing is, uh, the buggy and the carriage were known to have actually be of a thickness of metal that I would not exactly say would be a tank, but more of like an armored car. However, still, even if it was an armored car, I could still see this probably being known as a tank back then. Now, these things weren't exactly known as tanks. They were just known by the name that they were given. So, that wasn't exactly the easiest thing to look up. And in fact, whenever I try typing it in on the internet, you don't get anything out of this. This is why I read books, not online idiocy, that of which we find. In fact, I probably won't be able to actually find uh, any type of information for y'all on the internet, but you see my point. But however, somebody did do a little bit of a good job on the Confederate tank on this design, because it almost reminds me of the wagon, as we can see which was known to be an ironclad on wheels. Now, that's actually kind of hilarious. Now, I did do a little bit of drawing on these, seeing as though I couldn't find a design online. But, uh, yeah, so forgive me, but we'll get to that very soon on their design and such. And forgive me, because these drawings are not 
exactly the best. I'm not best at drawing. Uh, so, yeah. Now, we have to understand, though, that the designs were first created especially. But the tank wasn't exactly invented during the American Civil War. It was first designed by a Leonardo da Vinci. Now, that design was actually pure at the side. And in fact, Leonardo da Vinci's design would later give way to the tent. The tent was something that uh, technically looked near identical to Leonardo da Vinci's design. It was technically around one story tall, and was stated to actually have a single cannon, that of which had to be, well, work like an ironclad. In other words, it was a muzzle loader or something like that. We don't know. But the thing is, the thing was too damn small to hold a steam-powered engine. So, for all we know is that this design was probably not the best, so even though the Confederates didn't use it, which this one was supposed to be made by the later parts of the war in 1865. This is probably by only a month or two before the war fully ended. And it's actually stated that the man who created this design was actually known as Henry Seymour. Henry Seymour was known to have created this design for the Confederate tanks, and as well, also another design known as the wagon. But the wagon is a little bit of a different type of story, which we'll get to very soon. Now, one thing I also have to put out here is to the fact that the British were actually the first ones to design a workable type steam-powered, well, tank. And it was this weird thing. I don't know what the hell this is, but man, I do not want to go up and against it. It uh, was first designed in 1855, but the design for it did actually stop and it was never fully developed. So. Uh, that was probably a good thing and probably a scare, uh, well, a major thing in history. But it was supposed to be at least, I want to say about, uh, t uh, contain, uh, two stories almost. So that's kind of a big tank. Yikes. Now, one thing we have to understand, though, that it would even have, yes, those sword-like blades on the side. Uh, I wouldn't want to go anywhere near that, so, yeah. Uh, but majorly, I have to put this out here, what we have to understand is that the fact that the designs of these three Confederate tanks I'm about to show you are incredibly different from what we are actually told in American history. So, why don't we first start off with the buggy, then with the carriage, and then with the wagon. And as well, also show you the tactics and how it was supposed to be used as. Anyways, guys, why don't we get right into it, shall we? Alright, you know, as we can see here, we have actually the, well, the buggy. Now, as we can see, the buggy is actually designed as a type of early Confederate, uh, well, armored car. Now, this type of armored car was a little different. Now, if none of y'all know what a buggy is, a buggy is, well, something like this image, as we can see here. And in doing so, the buggy was, well, remodeled and armor-plated. However, this type of design was a little different than what we might expect. Now, I only had to go off of research and documented notes on what it might have looked like, so... Yeah, even I don't know what it might have looked like, but all that I do know is that it could have looked something like this. Now, what we have to understand is that the length of it was somewhere between 87 and 60 inches, and its width was somewhere between 60 and 48 inches. So, that is actually giving us a good description on how big these things might have been. But, one thing we have to understand is that sometimes, I hear, in fact, most of the time, the buggy would have actually been equipped with a breech-loading style cannon. This breech-loading cannon, as we can see here, now, I, as I said, I'm not the best of drawers, so, yeah. However, this image here, uh, as you can see, gives us a good example of what a breech-loading cannon would have looked like back during the American Civil War times. Now, in doing so, we have to understand that this type of design even had a type of, well, uh, cannon brace. This cannon brace would have been established on the bottom end to the front in order to actually keep the, well, buggy from going backwards, which was an impressive design. Now, this design, though, as we, it was actually stated on the manual scripts by Confederate soldiers, when they used it, it, it stated to have a ladder that of which it fixed to a head trap door upon the roof. So, in doing so, they would have actually removed, had a type of latch-like roof, like this right here, as we can see, in other words, when it's moving, such as like this, this is its rear form, but 
when it's stopped and in position, uh, guess what? It's going to lift up that type of blast shield for your commander to actually use. Now, I don't know if they had uh, a slit or whatever for them to look out with binoculars, so it's hard to say. But this is this one I'm going off of from the historical manual scripts, that of which I had to find. Now, one thing we do know is that it was stated to have gun ports on both sides of the said buggy. In other words, the buggy was supposed to have a type of gun port like this, so that way soldiers could actually point out a shotgun, as we could see this guy here. In fact, Confederates were known to actually uh, bring their own firearms from home and use it in the war. And in fact, just imagine if a Confederate soldier with a shotgun was supposed to point this out and say, for example, the buggy is surrounded by Yankees or Federal forces, whatever you want to call them. And guess what? They're going to use the gun port to point out their shotgun and blast them away with buckshot. Especially in point-blank range, that's going to kill a lot of, well, Yankees. Then, there will also be the main cannon that we are also to know. Now, the way they would have used this is entirely a little weird, but also inventive. Because most of the time, it's stated that they would have used a type of canister known as grape shot, or canister shot. Now, or as southerners called it, scatter shot. Which would have been filled up with this grape shot of ball bearings... Or in, the, in this case, uh, like a big giant shotgun. Now, it would have also sometimes had an explosive charge established inside the canister, but we don't know. But yes, this is what it would have looked like. It would have looked like this mug-like type of cartridge, which there have been dozen of them, probably all literal across the said bottom end of the ground, or the floor base area. And as well, there's also this elevation type post for it to actually elevate the said cannon. Now... This entirely was an impressive design, and you got to admit, this was incredible. However, we don't know what it would have looked like on the inside, so I'm just going off of the research on what it would have probably looked like, and this is pretty much what it would have best looked like to me, anyways. I, As I said, I'm not the best of drawer, so please don't shoot the messenger when it comes to this, or drawer in this case. Uh, but... Now, I hear many of you already, Templar, why would they use this weird mug-like uh, structure here for the canister? Well, in truth, this was a breech-loading design structure, meaning what they would use is this mug right here is this right here. In other words, it would be removed from the rear and placed in, meaning they don't need to pull it back into the said, well, buggy in order to reload it. But this is kind of the really cool thing that I kind of like about it entirely. Okay, now we have to understand on how this thing was used entirely. Now, yes, as you can see, I did label down on uh, what these things would have actually be in the entire thing, such as the buildings, Union troops, the buggy, and such. Now, we have to understand, uh, first let's go to the city. Now, we can see that this is probably a town square or something like that, and these are all Union troops marching in. And guess what? There's this buggy. Now just imagine though, the Confederate soldiers don't f open fire on them until they're close in range. Meaning, this buggy here could probably open fire with the grape shot. And guess what? He's just taking out this group of soldiers. While this one would then fire another round into the front ranks. This was probably the most devastating thing. So just imagine this. You just wiped out a couple of... Union soldiers like that. And in doing so, that would have actually caused massive trauma and effect onto the Union forces. So I could probably see this devastating the Union forces entirely. And guess what? The Confederate Army, especially, that were probably hidden inside these buildings, they could probably start coming out and start adding support to the said buggies. Meaning they'd probably start to surround the Union forces. So this would probably be the major thing that the Confederates would have used, especially in the city, to protect their homes. Now, entirely, also, what about in the forest area, as we could see here, or open fields? Well, as we could see, we got the fields here, and we got the forest. Guess what? Ambush-style strategy. As soon as we see the Union supply wagons and these Union troops marching forward, guess what? These buggies are hidden inside the forest area. Guess what? They're just going to open fire entirely wreck 
have it on the said Union supply line. And as soon as that happens, guess what? As soon as they destroy the supply line right all along here, they could easily just evade from the said area, having their horse-drawn type buggies. Which, this is probably the most impressive design, that of which it stated that the Confederates would use it like this in order to try and destroy Union supply lines and as well hold a major structure in the said city, such as like, say, at the Battle of Petersburg or at the Battle of Vicksburg, especially, that we understand in history. Now, one thing we do have to understand is to the fact that there are some manuscripts or uh, historical type meaning in the said structure that states that the Confederates did use these in the war. However, there isn't exactly much proof or evidence. However, we do have to understand that the Confederacy had used them as a secret weapon. Now, I hear many of you already saying, oh, but Templar, uh, could you shoot these things and bullets just go through them? No. Musts or rifles or even uh, pistol rounds could not go through these type of structure. So, meaning it's not going to do them that much good, especially if the case comes that the Union actually uh, gets too dang close, and guess what, they're going to open fire on the said thing, but what will happen is the bullets would just start bouncing off. For example, let's actually use an example like this. Say, here's our buggy, for example, and in doing so, uh, here's the cannon, so yeah, I'm trying to get that best in line there for you. Guess what, Union troops are starting to march around the said thing in order to actually, well, get across. Now, just imagine, though, they released the horse, for example, which this is where the uh, horse attachment would be right here. So, yeah, I'm trying to draw this as best as I can, y'all. I know I'm not that good of a drawer, but still my point. But just imagine, as soon as these Union troops just start to make their way across, guess what? Here come the shotguns. They could easily just fire one type of group in of shells at the said area and then the other barrel could probably shoot the other meaning they're going to end up rotating them and in the process keep firing on these said union groups however as soon as the union realizes this the others in the rear especially back here are going to know that something bad is going to happen guess what they have got killed as well and even if the Union could easily see that they're being fired upon, they're going to end up trying to, well, fire. But, problem is, the bullets are just going to, well, bounce off, hitting the Union troops. The only way you could actually destroy this, apparently, was using artillery. But artillery back then, especially if it was on uh, precise artillery, was incredibly rare at that time in the American Civil War. And you needed a runner. Now, even though these guys might sacrifice their lives, they probably believe that, well, they gave their all for the Republic or the people of the Confederacy. So, this is a major thing we have to understand entirely. But this is incredible to this form, which I kind of do like that the Confederates actually created this somehow, because this is just awesome. Okay, now let's go to the coach, or in this case, the carriage, as I like to call it. Now, this type of design of carriage was stated to be somewhere of between the length of 88 inches and as well the width was 72 inches and the height was somewhere between 6 and 7 feet. Now, the design of it was somewhat a little weird because of the fact that this was both built in the form of a full carriage and a half carriage, as it's also known as. The half carriage was a little different. In fact, this was technically an armored car on steroids compared to the buggy. And in fact, the design of it was slightly different. One is the fact that they, there were two versions. There was the full carriage and the half carriage. Now, the half carriage was, well, technically it had the same length and width. However, its height was a lot different. It was around 60 inches. So that's exactly not actually as big as six to seven feet, as we know. So, in other words, this pretty much only covers like nearly half of the human body compared to this. Now, what we do understand though, that the Confederacy actually invented this thing to fire mortar shells. That's right, this is a mortar here. I tried my best to create it. However, they would also not just done it with this design, but also with the half design model 
with a wooden stand for the said user to, well, ride the, well, uh, carriage, or uh, drive the carriage in this case. And as well, would even sometimes establish a volley gun. Now, volley guns like this is uh, entirely a Confederate style type of machine gun at the time. Now, volley guns were not exactly that rare during the American Civil War. In fact, prior before Richard Gatling created the said Gatling gun, the volley gun was probably the biggest type of, well, field artillery or field manned artillery at the time. However, they weren't exactly used as much during the American Civil War as we like to think because you actually got to rotate them with the said artillery system, meaning these things were technically as a last-ditch effort type of weapon. In other words, they're meant to hold on a strategic point in the battle, or in this case, to hold a position in the middle of a said city. So, but they could have used this design model, especially, to hold onto a said structure in the city. While this model would probably have been best used in the uh, plain open fields, as we know in history. Now, it would have also used these said shotgun ports in order to defend the said uh, structure, but the entirety of this area was completely open, meaning you could easily just throw, lob a grenade in there and it probably be done. But the major thing is though, this thing was the protected head to toe, especially the, uh, well, full model, especially instead of the half model, because the half model, as we can see, only goes halfway up compared to this model, that of which covers the entirety of the body. So, in truth, you got a gun port at each part of the body. In fact, on the in inner parts, we have, on both sides, they have three, or in this case, six on the sides entirely. And for the front and the back, we got both got two gun ports. Meaning, this thing's going to be an armored shooting spree for this thing, and it's going to end up killing a lot of soldiers. So the Confederates did design a very good design. Problem is, was how it was invented. Now, there is a slight story of sometimes the Confederates using swivel guns on these things, I hear, especially when it came to the half model. I don't know if that's true or not. Which, swivel guns were a naval-style weapon and are still kind of cool to think about being used on this thing, but I probably guess it meant that they were a mixture of swivel gun and volley gun, meaning it was a big design of buckshot cannon, if you would, for a volley gun system. However, I don't know how that would work so well, because volley guns were a breech-loading type of weapon. And so were some uh, swivel guns, yes, but the swivel guns by the time of the American Civil War were somewhat uh, late and non-existent, so it's kind of hard to explain. But yes, as we can see, this design model, as the Confederates would use, the Confederate forces, as soon as they were to say, well, land in an area, or reach an area entirely, what they would have done is dismount from the said carriage, and guess what? They would open fire with the mortar shell, with the full type version, and probably destroy a group of Union troops. Now, uh, with the half model, we don't exactly have much information, because entirely, it's stated that from a battle in, I want to say, uh, I think it was something around the Battle of Antietam or somewhere. In fact, there are many battles that of which do state something near identical to this being seen. And in such, so mainly around the region of Maryland, Virginia, and as well Tennessee. And in such, it's stated that a un group of Union troops could easily never find us, and in such, we could easily hide behind enemy lines and destroy them. This is written by Confederate uh, informants during the American Civil War who wrote about their exploits about using these type of machines, of which later got on the hands of the Union after the American Civil War, but long after by the time of the Spanish-American War, so it's entirely a little different than what we think. So, entirely, it was technically what you might call a field tank. Now, if none of y'all know what field tanks are, it's kind of somewhat near identical to this, but I would think uh, the wagon would be more identical. But, anyways, let's get to the tactics and I can show you what I mean by this. Alright, now as we can see, we see a major type of battle that we can actually take place. For example, say for, like, if the Confederate Army is trying to force this group of Confederates or this Union troops, like right here, 
they're entirely over going to overwhelm the said confederates. They're going to end up pushing forward. But as soon as they would have done that, guess what? They These guys right here, where the vo type of carriage group is, they would open fire on the, the well Union positions and especially bombard them. So just imagine this. They could easily just bombard this Union group, or worse, they could end up opening fire on that Union group. And entirely, this was probably an impressive design that the Confederates invented. However, they could probably even try and attack the side end of the Union here, which would also allow this group of Confederates to probably move forward and flank the Union. Now, this is entirely how it might have actually been used. So, we don't exactly have much information on how, but entirely this is how I do believe it might have been used. The same could actually be said if this bigger group of Union troops was trying to attack this smaller group of Confederate troops. Guess what? As soon as this group of Union was trying to flank the Confederates, it would open fire and attack the said Union forces. And the same, they could even attack the center rank of this Union force and such. So, entirely, if the Confederates were outnumbered, they could easily rely on this mortar crew system or this volley gun system to destroy Union forces. Now, one thing I have to put this out here, y'all, uh, I'm just trying my best to explain this as best I can, but there isn't that much information that we can actually go off on when it comes to this design. All that we do know is that it would have actually probably been incredible. But the major thing is that this car the carriage was probably really cool as an armored car if you would take it that way. Alright, now we're down to the last one. And this one I think is probably the most best research that is actually on there. And this is actually created by, well, none other than Henry Seymour, as I explained. Henry Seymour actually ex tried to create a Confederate-style tank like this. Now, this, as I stated, was stated to have been called an ironclad on wheels, which it actually does look like an ironclad, almost. I'm just going off of the information, what it explains, and what it looks like. So that could give us a good explanation. Its height was around 10 feet, its width was 8 feet, and its length was around 20 feet, which was nicknamed the wagon. Yes, they took this from a type of wagon like we see in Wild West films. So, yeah, I know, I know it's a little uh, big in the center. I know I'm just going off of, uh, as I said, I'm not the best of drawers here, okay? But, anyways... One thing we have to understand about this thing, it was incredibly big and huge and dangerous to face off in the middle of a battle. However, the way they would explain to have actually been created, first it stated that Henry Seymour took a said uh, wagon and he started to craft metal around it using a type of form of structure, you almost like a tent. In other words, he took the wagon structure on the inside like this and just placed up a type of rod or something like that in order to hold it up. While, so in other words, there would probably be a wooden uh, structure around the frame right here. So a wooden frame would be connected to the said metal sheeting. Now, one thing we do have to explain, though, is actually on how it was designed. Well, there was a weird design that it, which it also had. It even had these wheel guards. Yes, it even had the guards for the wheels, so it was kind of impressive. However, the wheels were, well, wagon-like and weren't exactly the best idea. Now, it is stated, though, that Seymour actually created the said, well, tank in order to actually hold off Union forces or as well to derail a Union train. That's right, derail. It actually had a ram head right here, in which it was actually stated to have been lower, like literally, it was just lower to the fact, like nearly touching the said ground. Just imagine this is like the ground right here, and it's going on, or the track itself, which this was stated to actually be used on train tracks, and it would be used to actually, well, <laughs> ramming, the ram's head was nearly touching the said, well, train tracks, which is kind of horrifying. 
However, we have to understand that this thing was a steam-powered engine-style machine. In fact, it's actually stated that Henry Seymour had actually uh, taken this design in 1864, in late 1864, by my dad, and in such, he actually wanted to use it to destroy the Union supply lines along the rail system. Problem is, it was kind of a big problem because the Union could easily just destroy a rail system easily, and it wasn't actually that hard. In fact, Robert E. Lee even stated on how idiotic this idea was. Rather, he stated that they should just destroy the Union supply lines entirely, rather than rely on using this, which is kind of why it wasn't used in major production. In fact, they only had one attempt of it actually being used. However, it was only for a show of display. In other words, it was meant to, uh, well, show the Confederate commanders on how it could personally be used in order to destroy the Union forces, which it was used on open playing ground and then was used to get on train tracks somehow. However, the Union also had, well, uh, armored trains in time. In fact, even had artillery-type trains, if you can think about that, to actually, well, destroy Confederate towns and villages and such, or homes, especially if they could easily take, say, like, Petersburg. So, it was kind of a bad idea to create this in the first place. Now, it is stated, though, that this thing was actually armored head-to-toe in this plate armor, and unlike the carriage or the, well, uh, buggy, it's actually stated that this was entirely bomb-proof. In other words, it could easily withstand the explosive hits of, or impacts, of the said cannons of the Union Army. So, entirely it was a good idea, but it was also a bad idea. And unlike the rest, it actually stated to have had eight, uh, around eight to nine uh, gun ports, but entirely there is a cannon port, so I just call it... Uh, the, so I would just say eight gun ports entirely. So that's actually a lot of shotguns that are probably going to be used in the middle of this killing. So, uh, however, these will only be used in case of the fact that the Union had actually managed to, well, surround the said vehicle. However, there is also stated to have been used a trap door underneath, which some actually stated to actually state from Henry Seymour that he stated to the Union commanders in some letters that they could easily use a trapdoor in order to throw type of small grenades underneath the said wagon in order to destroy, well, the legs of the Union troops that were surrounding them. So even if the Union surrounded them, guess what, they could throw a couple grenades out and use shotguns to kill them. Now, entirely, the cannon was a breech loading design system. However, we do get some accounts that it was actually a muzzle loader, we don't know, so it's still 50-50 at this game, so we don't really exactly know. But unlike other Civil War tank, the other Civil War tanks entirely, or other tanks in history, it used a telescopic sight, or in this case, this uh, periscope. And in such, it was just a mirror attached to a, well, two mirrors attached to a said, uh, well, metal piece frame. So in fact, it just stayed outward the entire time. And in fact, the engine was all the way in the rear just like most vehicles today. However, the design system on how it was supposed to be driven was a little weird as it's supposed to be explained. It used a lever style system, meaning it actually entirely was stated to have lever systems for left, right, go, stop, and entirely everything. Now, we are stated to have stated it, that the driver would have to sit down, so I just put a pillow and a uh, wooden side, uh, well, wooden seat, in order for the person to sit down. Problem is, we don't know what it would have looked like. Maybe he would have sat on the freaking floor, for all we know. But the thing is, this thing would have actually held, held out a lot of soldiers. In fact, it would have held a commander, a driver, and as well, a gun loader, and as well, a f guy who fired it. So, it would have an entire artillery crew inside this thing. And as well, also added shells, which I did not add, I know. Now, one thing I do not understand on this majorly is on how the fact that the wagon managed to actually be manufactured entirely. But we are entirely told that the first demonstration on it being used, especially on hills and targets, uh, made none other than Jefferson Davis 
astonished with belief that the South could probably win the battles with this type of machine. Problem is, there was only one of these models made, and this was only for uh, showmanship prior before the end of the war. And this design is pretty much designed in 1864, as we can understand. Problem is, this design would not entirely be used be for any battle at all due to the fact it would take a lot of money to make this thing. Now, Henry Seymour Moore was stated to have actually copied from Confederate ironclads in order to create this thing, but that was the problem. He created it off of a ship, not a regular, well, boat or a, well, vehicle that which would help. So in other words, if he actually relied less on a naval type instructions and more on a land type he could have created a little better because he was still using wheels when he should have used tank treads or in this case tractor treads that which did somewhat exist with the cotton gin machines problem is uh the major thing about this if the major thing is <laughs> well it was too damn big and it was too damn small of an engine to actually power it and it was too damn heavy so entirely it wasn't exactly the best idea now when it came to the wagon actually being used as we can see it would have been used in two type of ways either derailing trains or in the middle of a major city now just imagine this this is the major town or something like that such as petersburg and guess what it's being attacked by the union so they got to actually hold them off and guess what there is debris all over the field, destroyed buildings, and as well barricades. So, guess what? This type of tank is going to be used to destroy the Union forces. It opens fire on the said group of Union. This would actually direct the Union to move entirely towards a trap point, that of which the Confederates would actually open fire. This means that it would be a slaughter fest for the Union forces, meaning I don't see the Union probably making themselves out of this one. So entirely, this was an incredible design, but you could easily just use a cannon just like this. So it also was not a very best or brightest idea. In fact, the Confederates did need resources to use this thing. So in fact, Robert E. Lee and many other Confederate commanders at the time even stated how idiotic it would be to use their resources to make this thing when they could just use cannons. Now, entirely though, there was also the derailing of, well, uh, Union trains. In other words, just imagine this. This type of wagon, the wagon type of steam-powered tank would easily just burrow into the said train causing it to derail with, as I stated, with that, uh, well, ramrod that, or a uh, ram said that of which was nearly touching the said train tracks, guess what? It could easily get below the said train and derail it. And as soon as these Union troops actually start to try and leave the area, guess what? They're going to get pop shot by shotguns or worse, the cannon itself, that of which could easily just kill them. Now, entirely though, this is probably one of the good ideas, but it was still a bad invention entirely. Now, as we can see, y'all, the American Civil War tank was probably a very good idea of an invention, but the problem is, it probably wasn't exactly the best idea at all. Now, those three models that I showed you, I didn't exactly have any diagram for it to be explained, so I had to create my own idea of what it might have been looked like. Now. There are some historical books that actually do show on their historical use. However, we do have to understand that in some Confederate history or Civil War history or Union history, or whatever you want to count it as, the Union technically had to also innovate their own designs of military warfare. For example, we can easily see that with artillery being used. But the thing is, there is also many forms of how the machines were actually to be used. Now, I hear many of you already asking and saying this, Templar, did they really make something like this? Well, let's think about it. The Confederacy were the ones who made the first cigar-shaped submarine that was actually successful in 
Uh, well, destroying U.S. ships, they also made the Ironclad. Before the Union made their own version of Ironclad, there were also many inventions of weaponry during American Civil War, such as the Gatling gun that was created. And then there would also be the Confederate flying machine that was created by a dentist. So we had to understand that the Confederacy would have tried anything and whatever it took to win the war. Entirely, though, we have to understand that the tank at the time was not exactly the best invention because of the fact mostly the only good ones were probably the horse-drawn version because, uh, yeah, we can see the problem with that. But in truth, we have to see the only true Confederate-style tank entirely we could be labeled as a tank entirely was created by, well, Henry Seymour. And the wagon, well, it was just that. It was just an armor-plated wagon. It was not the best invention. Now, one major problem about the wagon was the fact that it had uh, one major drawback. One was the fact it could not turn when it was moving. And two is the fact, uh, here's the thing, um, it didn't have a reverse. Yeah, here's the thing. Now, many of you might wonder, oh, Timbor, what's the problem with that? Here's the thing. Imagine me, here's a train, here comes that stinking <laughs> Uh, well, rams it, and goom, I end up process derail a tank, or a type train, or, here's the thing now, I'm, my type of tank is now stuck on the dang tank tra train tracks and such, and here's the thing, I don't have any means of getting it off, meaning it's just going to end up staying there. So, why entirely was this design invented? Well, it was invented to actually try and win the war. However, the Confederates had a type of design entirely. Problem is, they were a little too early to the punch to making it. But we had to understand that during the American Civil War, you actually had to do whatever you had to do to win. And in fact, this is why even none other than Jefferson Davis even called for a guerrilla war in order to win this. However, we have heard some points in history that the, it was either the buggy or a carriage was actually captured by a group of Union troops, that of which was stated to be brought to United States President Abraham Lincoln for him to actually be, well, have it modified for him anyways, for him to actually go to the South, especially after the war. This was under orders of none other than General Grant. Grant actually stated that even if the South would have actually surrendered, he told President Lincoln that they would need to protect him in any case of, well, in case of, well, he was going to get shot. For example, it kind of would make a lot of sense because Lincoln was targeted a lot in the American Civil War. And in fact is, many times over, many Confederates, especially, or rebels in this case, did not like him. Even in the North, he was actually entirely hated. You couldn't exactly leave a major city in Washington or Philadelphia for one major reason. He uh, could easily be targeted by, well, loyalists to the Confederacy in northern states. That's right. There was a major form then of which uh, it's actually stated that Pinkertons actually had to, or the Pinkertons it, intelligence agency that protected trains, actually wanted to make sure to protect Abraham Lincoln especially. And entirely, this could actually be explained. Problem is, we don't exactly how I should put this. Uh, we don't exactly know entirely what happened to the said armored car, but we are told is that Lincoln never got a chance to use it because it was finally finished for him five to three days later after his death. So, the only person that really used it was President Grant. So, Grant issued it and he ended up using it. Only three times. So, entirely in his form of presidency, he only used it three times, especially while going out to the western frontier of the United States. In fact, it's actually stated that when Grant had done this, he actually wanted to make sure to, well, pacify the West, as we put it. However, we have to understand that the American Civil War did have weird inventions. Problem is, they're not that much known. In fact, there are many type of documents that do explain this, which, as I stated, I have to look at historical manuscripts and books that tell the story. Problem is, the internet doesn't teach you everything, people. You might want to get a book while you still can. But that entirely, whenever I keep reading about this type of manuscript and a historical wolf form and such, 
in which, uh, let's see here, but, uh, oh. In fact, it's actually stated that in one form in the parts of history, it stated that the buggy was used in a type of form of scouting, but yet later in such was used as an armored type of military warfare machine. The Confederates actually established it as a type of machine that was issued in order to destroy Union supply lines or to effectively use it on the field of battle. Now, that actually could explain on how it could be used. But, entirely, it only gives a uh, brief mentioning on what this thing would have looked like. All that we know is it stated it would have looked like a buggy, and in such, the would even be a type of tele telescopic area for a said commander to walk up upon with a said ladder. So, we don't know how or what the hell this thing would have looked like. So, yeah. But the major thing is, we have to look in the history books. Problem is, most of the time people prefer burning books rather than reading them. But yeah. But the thing is, we have to understand that the Confederacy were trying to win the war. And during the American Civil War, we can easily view this in many points in history, when many people were trying to win a war and ended up creating ma weapons of mass destruction. For example, uh, Richard Gatling created the Gatling gun in order to cease uh, big wars. And as well, during the World War I, the tank was well, finally brought back into the war, in or the world in history, and in such, we can easily see that the machine gun was probably one of the most devastating things out there that ended cavalry warfare. Mm -hmm. However, what defeated, well, my, uh, warfare from World War II would actually be the fact of inventions of the modern day, such as drones, or as well targeting systems and such. So in doing so, weapons of mass destruction and such, in the process, evolved the military. So just imagine, what would have happened if the Confederacy had actually used these type of, well, uh, things on a full scale? Might have been a bigger type deal than we think. But the major thing is, though, the Confederacy couldn't exactly make them that much, due to the fact they had a lacking amount of resources compared to the Union. However, there is actually a statement that actually that none other than Henry Seymour had actually destroyed any form of documentation on the creation of his type of vehicle or tanks, especially the tent, which was his last invention in late 1865. And in doing so, he had to make sure that any form of information about these tanks had to be done entirely and destroyed. But, we have to understand, there is no hardly, well, hardly any information that we can explain about this. But still, even if you're like me, try your best and take a look at history before it's too late. Because, I myself have had to research most about this a lot, and even most of it is still left unknown. And, I'm no genius when it comes to this point in subject in history, but there's not that much information I can go off on that explains it. Now, we have to understand, though, that during the American Civil War, there would have been many inventions invented, as well, even prior before the American Civil War, especially with the American colonies using the Turtle submarine, and as well, there would even also be, during the time of the Byzantine people, or the Byzantine Empire, anyways, they would use Greek fire in order to defeat the Turks and Ottomans to defend their homeland. So... Weapons of mass destruction would be created to defend their homeland entirely, especially if they were losing a battle. We can easily see this with Germany, with creating V2 and, uh, well, rockets, and including the jet engine. So, entirely, this could explain a lot. Well, especially with the atomic bomb, especially when America was trying to win a war. So, entirely, we have to understand that this would incredibly make the type of battle a little different. But, entirely, we don't know what these things would have looked like, nor do we know what they would have actually been like. But, if you ask me, I would have loved to actually see somebody recreate this thing, but, unfortunately, now I only have to go off of right now, though, is to go off the documented history, that of which it's shown to actually be in these books. Now, the what book I mainly went through, especially with this red book here, is the documentation of forgotten Civil War history. Now, 
this book belonged to my father, and it's from the 1980s, give or take. So, that's a big type of book for that historical form in history. But the thing is, I have to go through not just this book, but a lot of others to make sure it's true. And at least two to three other books explain that it might have actually been true. But anyways, guys, if you want me to talk about any type of forgotten subject in American Civil War or any subject in history, please let me know in the comments below, and I will be happy to get right to it. Anyways, guys, it's been Templar. Hopefully you found this helpful. Like and subscribe for more videos, and also click that bell button for notifications when the next video comes up. Also, y'all check out our Facebook, so that way you can see more on these type of history. Anyways, guys, I'll try and leave more description and history about this subject down in the links below. Anyways, guys, this has been Templar. Have a great day. Mm-hmm.